A seven-year-old boy experiences episodes of screaming upon awakening. His parents rush to his room and try to wake him up. However, he seems to have fallen asleep again. In the morning, the boy has no idea what his parents are talking about. What is the diagnosis? There are some clinical clues here to let us know what the diagnosis is. So first, his age. He is a seven-year-old boy. Secondly, he experiences episodes of screaming upon awakening. Third, he fell asleep right after this happened. And lastly, he had no idea, no recollection of any of this. So this patient most likely has sleep terrors. Sleep terrors are most common in children and are thought to have a genetic predisposition. It is a non-REM parasomnia that occurs in N3 sleep stage. The risk factors include stress, fatigue, sleep apnea, and even some medications. These patients present with intense fear and agitation. They cry or scream on awakening. These episodes usually occur during the first part of the night, but they are very difficult to arouse during these episodes. After the episode, they may fall right asleep and have no memory, no recollection of what happened. Witnessing these episodes can be very distressing for their parents, family members, or guardians. So it's important to let them know that sleep terrors are usually self-limited meaning they can resolve on their own without any intervention. So it's important to provide reassurance about this. Another thing they can do is remove any objects that may cause harm during the episodes. In a few patients, benzodiazepines are used for refractory cases. This is typically a last resort. If you have any other tips on how to manage sleep terrors, please leave them in the comment section down below to help the powerhouse family. Now let's take a look at another patient. A 36 year old military veteran who has a history of PTSD experiences recurrent nightmares almost every day. He vividly remembers the details of these nightmares. What is the best treatment option for this patient? So there are some clues in his history to what the diagnosis is. Firstly, his age. He is a 36-year-old military veteran. Secondly, his past medical history of PTSD. Also, that he has these nightmares almost every day and he remembers everything about them. So this case describes another parasomnia called nightmare disorder. It most commonly affects adults. It is a REM related parasomnia that is characterized by recurrent nightmares. A major risk factor for nightmare disorder is post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. These patients experience recurrent frightening dreams that occur mainly during the second half of the sleep cycle. This disorder causes a lot of functional impairment or distress. Patients with nightmare disorder also can remember the details of their nightmares. If their nightmare disorder is mild, then reassurance is a good way to manage these patients. Oftentimes, these patients have to do therapy. 
the most common one being imagery rehearsal therapy this is where they try to modify the endings of the nightmares or the frightening parts of the nightmares so that they are less frightening when they happen again Prazosin is a drug that can be used to treat nightmare disorders if it's associated with PTSD. Prazosin is also called Minipress and it has alpha blocker properties. This allows Prazosin to also be used in the treatment of patients with BPH or benign prostatic hyperplasia. Now let's take a closer look at the differences between nightmare disorder and sleep terrors. Nightmare disorders occur in REM sleep, while sleep disorders or sleep terrors do not. They occur in non-REM sleep in stage N3. It's important to note that nightmare disorders occur in the second half of the sleep cycle while sleep terrors occur in the first half of the sleep cycle. Also, in nightmare disorders, these patients are alert and can be aroused. However, in sleep terrors, this is not the case. Patients with nightmare disorders have excellent dream recall and unfortunately can remember all the aspects of their nightmares. However, persons with sleep terrors don't have any recollection of what happened. Another key difference is that nightmare disorders more commonly affects adults, while sleep terrors more commonly affects children. As always, if you like this video, power up the like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell. And to continue learning more, click this video right here.